Good morning and welcome to Midday with Gray. Today is Wednesday, March the 9th, and on this day, the church commemorates St. Gregory of Nyssa. Uh, in this season of Lent, I'd like to share with you uh, a service of the Word, a service uh, that is themed with penitence and faith, and it comes from the new patterns of worship liturgical resources that are authorized through the Church of England. Let us take a moment of silence before we join together in this time of prayer. The Lord, our Redeemer, be with you. Let us pray. God of our days and our years, we set this time apart for you. We ask you to form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Let us hear our Lord's blessing on all those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mindful of the suffering and the persecution that are falling upon the people of Ukraine, let us take a moment of silence and then conclude with a prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for the world's leaders, for compassion, strength, and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for our broken world in this time of crisis that we may reach out in solidarity to our sisters and brothers in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. Amen. And let us step closer to God with these prayers as we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom from you no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for the proclamation of God's word. Uh, let us begin our readings today uh, by sharing in the reading of Psalm 130. Uh, there is a common refrain for the psalm, so as you are following along at home, I invite you to join with me in saying, My hope is in God's word. Let's say that again. My hope is in God's word. A reading from Psalm 130. The psalmist writes, Out of the depths I have called you, Lord, let your ears be open to my voice. My hope is in God's word. If you recorded all of our sins, who could come before you? My hope is in God's word. There is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. My hope is in God's word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than those who watch for daybreak. My hope is in God's word. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. My hope is in God's word. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My hope is in God's Word. Our readings continue with a reading from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 24 to 28. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and she penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. There is nothing defiled which gains entry into her, for she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. Although she is but one, she can do all things, and while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our final reading for you today uh, comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. Jesus, the way to the Father. And Jesus said this to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you already know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all of this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now allow me to tell you a little bit about Gregory of Nyssa, who we are commemorating today. In the 4th century, a Greek-speaking family in Asia Minor produced a whole clan of saints. Now, one member of this family was Basil the Great, whom we commemorate on uh, January the 2nd. Today, we commemorate his younger brother, Gregory, who became the Bishop of Nyssa. Now, Gregory didn't start off following in his brother's footsteps. On the contrary, he seemed to have felt oppressed by the sanctity which surrounded him at home, and instead, he chose uh, to pursue a career as a lawyer and as a teacher of rhetoric. But in the year 371, his older brother pushed him into becoming the bishop of a small town called Nyssa. Before long, Gregory's enemies trumped up a charge of embezzlement against him, and he was forced to flee his diocese. Their perjury was eventually exposed, and he returned to Nyssa in triumph. In the meantime, Gregory suffered two bereavements. His brother, Basil, died, leaving Gregory regretful over the bad history that they'd had, this history of a strained relationship. And soon afterwards, his sister, Macrina, also passed away. But before her death, while Gregory was nursing her, brother and sister had long conversations about the Christian faith and about how Christians should live together. These conversations had such an influence upon Gregory that ever afterwards he referred to his sister Macrina as my teacher. 
Now, Gregory came out of these experiences with a new sense of purpose. He took up his pen and he continued the theological work that his brother had left unfinished. And he began to emerge as a spiritual teacher in his own right. Gregory lived in a mountainous part of Asia Minor, and he envisioned the Christian life with God as if it were a journey up one of these crags. In his view, however, the ascent never ended because the human movement towards God must be as infinite as the divine goodness which made it possible. This vision expressed in Greek prose a remarkable beauty has nourished the spirituality of the Eastern Orthodox Church ever since. And so on this day, we give thanks for the teachings, the faith, and the life of Gregory of Nyssa. Let us continue in our service. A time of confession and forgiveness. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second commandment is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And together we say the Agnus Dei, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we rebel against him. Let us therefore renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins and pen in penitence and faith. I invite you to join with me in these prayers. Heavenly Father, wash away all of my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and I have done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, you formed your servant, Gregory of Nyssa, according to the knowledge of your goodness, so that he taught your faithful people the way of ascent towards your glory. Give us grace to love his doctrine, that in holiness we may approach your throne, and in glad thanksgiving, we may embrace your mercy. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with these words. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but it made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born into human likeness. Jesus humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
And our service concludes with this final prayer. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope that this time of prayer has helped to strengthen your faith in this week and helped you to feel part of our St. George's family of faith here in the beautiful parish of the Blue Mountains. Until next time, bye for now.